Welcome, welcome, welcome to Diving Deep. I'm Kirti. And I'm Rajesh. And this is where we talk about topics in society that are often overlooked. Yeah. This week, Mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about a topic that I don't know if it's like overlooked, more so Mm -hmm. misunderstood. Yeah, it's pretty looked. (laughs) (laughs) People look at it. People look at it a lot. It's going to be another mental health episode. Mm -hmm. So that means some sensitive topics since we're talking about trauma. Dun, dun, dun. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, So trauma. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my story. So a trigger warning, maybe. I won't talk about anything like super in depth. Mm -hmm. But sexual assault would be mentioned. Mm-hmm. So, if you don't want to listen to that, we understand. Neat. And I don't really have, like, too much trauma. But more, more of my perspective would be about, like, supporting those who, who've who been through trauma. And yeah. also just, like, just outside of perspectives on things. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll have good conversations. Okay. So, <laughs> I want to start off with what is trauma? That's a good starting point. Yeah. I like it. Should I just ask Siri? Siri? I mean, I already, already have, I, a, I have oh. a definition. Okay, fine. I wanted to ask Siri. So. Yeah, that, that's actually kind of more fun. We don't okay, ask you Siri. Do and then we'll see your thing. Yeah. I, see how, how trauma is so up. fun. <laughs> what is trauma? Um, an injury is... It just says what's an injury. Oh, Never. like a, tra- a trauma injury? Yeah. yeah. It's a, any physiological damage to the living tissue caused by immediate physical stress. Wow, Siri is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's right, but like... No, nah, but that's not the trauma I'm talking about. She should know that we're yeah. talking about mental health. That's okay. Well, well, what's your definition? Okay, so... Hold on, where to go? Where to go? I don't know. Okay. According to the Center for Addiction and Mental Health of Canada... It's the lasting emotional response that often results from living through a distressing event. So, I feel like this is often, like, what people think when they think of PTSD. Mm -hmm. So, I feel like PTSD, that's, it's separate. Like, you can have trauma and not have PTSD. Yeah. But I feel like some people don't necessarily understand that. Mm -hmm. Because you can go through a traumatic event but not have PTSD. PTSD has way more, like, prolonged symptoms. Mm -hmm. And I think I just want to make that clear right off the bat. Because I don't have PTSD, but I do have trauma. Like, the thing that I associate most about PTSD is, like, you can be easily, like, triggered by any stimuli. Yeah, and that can happen with trauma, too. But I think for PTSD, it's more so, like, you're more prone to, like, getting flashbacks Mm. and, like, really intense symptoms for a long period of time. Right. So that's why you see, like... um, People from the army mm-hmm. who've been to war and everything, mm-hmm. they they have PTSD often. Yeah. Or they just have traumatic experiences and that could lead to like depression, anxiety, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to make that clear. Um I also think that when people think about trauma, like part of the reason why I want to do this episode so bad mm-hmm. is because people often think that trauma has to be something specific a specific yeah. event like if it's not something that's like going to war yeah or like i don't know something super intense mm-hmm. right they assume that what they've been through isn't trauma and like mm-hmm. i've been through this too because i'm at a point where i'm still processing my trauma but i did not even see it as trauma mm-hmm. until like less than a year ago maybe right because i was so like <laughs> I was gaslighting myself. Yeah, yeah. Because I was sitting there being like, is this really, like... It doesn't really... It's, yeah. it's and also, not much. It's very easy to, like, rationalize things, too. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, like... like uh, I've, I've heard of people, like, going through this, like, oh, this person was just feeling this way, so that's why this happened to me. Yeah, I do that, too. You know? And it's, like... You're just, like... This is this is normal, or whatever. Yeah, like, so I spent so much time making excuses for yeah. my assaulter, and you know that, too. Yeah. Like... I've just spent so much time making excuses to the point where I'm thinking like, well, that's not traumatic then, mm-hmm. you know? Like, it's not something insane. It's not something yeah. that goes like, like something, you know, yeah. like a death, yeah. you know? Yeah. But I never wanted to necessarily call it trauma because mm-hmm. it also made it so much more real. 
That was, it's like a scary word. Like It is like, a scary word. Like, it's like trauma. Oh, it's like, bro. Like, it's because not... that's the thing. Like, the world that we're living in, trauma is associated with the worst of the worst mm-hmm. situations. Yeah. When it shouldn't be. Because, honestly, a lot of people have trauma, but they don't consider it trauma. Yeah. But fair. by definition and what actually trauma is, <laughs> yeah. it could literally be anything. It really depends on, like... Because every person, like, thinks about each thing as whether or not it's traumatic to them is individual, right? Yeah. It's so unique in that way. Yeah. Like, something that might be traumatic to me might not be traumatic to you. Yeah. But I feel like people often put it in a box. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to speak for everyone, obviously. Mm -hmm. But from what I've seen in, like, the public, I think that it's often, like, you're you're stuck being, like, you're looking at a list of things. And if it hasn't happened to you, then it's not traumatic. I think another reason for that could also just be, like, media. Like, just, like... When you think about someone who's traumatized in media, they're just like, oh, they went through this yeah. crazy thing, yeah. and then they're traumatized. And that's like, bro, well, compared to that, I'm just like, I'm chilling. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the media has a big influence on that yeah. sort of thing. And then you just think that it's nothing. I mean, mm-hmm. I always thought, like, my my situation wasn't bad enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, through therapy and all, I think I kind of realized, like, just because I'm not constantly having flashbacks yeah. doesn't mean I'm not traumatized but that's on the bench part <laughs> yeah right like yeah. i still the i had like repeated times of like mm-hmm. being assaulted like without me being comfortable or mm-hmm. anything right mm-hmm. and that whole thing like i always made excuses mm-hmm. and i spent so much time kind of trying to rationalize it mm-hmm. but i think that was my mind just trying to cope with it and so i never really considered it anything important to like talk to my therapist yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I never used the word trauma to describe it and she was telling me like the, the way you're describing this like this is yeah. traumatic to you yeah. because it's years later and you're still affected by it mm-hmm. and I think part of why I didn't want to like call it that was because I felt like st- I felt stupid mm-hmm. because I'm thinking I'm sitting there thinking like it's years later mm-hmm. and I'm thinking about this right. I'm affected by this Yeah, but you know as I've talked about, I learned that it's, like, really messed up. <laughs> and, that happened. Oh. and I can't, like, I, I still struggle with um, trying not to blame myself for a lot yeah. of these things. And I think that's what a lot of people go through, especially when it comes to things like sexual assault or, mm-hmm. like, they didn't say no, so mm-hmm. they kind of blame themselves. Yeah, and also just the fact that you've got to have this third person, like, third perspective, like your therapist, mm-hmm. sort of really back into like like the actual like reality of like comparing it with other things and like yeah. comparing it with like other traumatic things but oh this could be trauma it's so helpful because like yeah. otherwise you're just in your own conversation i was right? and you I could mean, just do you could say anything to yourself and it could just be true yeah you know? i mean i was so convinced i was yeah. like well it's like whatever <laughs> yeah. sometimes i think about it <laughs> yeah but. and yeah i do think about it from time to time it's not like i get super super anxious or something mm-hmm. crazy happens i'm not sweating having a panic attack mm-hmm. but it still affects my relationships with other people now it affects my relationship with myself and my body it affects my self-esteem my self-respect yeah. and i'm still in that stage of like blaming myself a lot of the mm-hmm. time so it affects my self-esteem mm-hmm. so it's at a point where it affects so much of what i'm how i'm thinking yeah. and how i think like when i'm in a relationship with another person yeah whether that's like just talking to a new person or like an actual like like a like a boyfriend sure right it's like it's so weird Mm. and it's hard to accept that that is the reality because you don't want to be like you you want it to mean nothing you want an experience to be like not that serious yeah especially when you see another person who is like I don't know if someone goes through something similar mm-hmm. to you and they're doing just fine. <laughs> yeah, com- comparing it's, is like the most like toxic thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so. it's so hard not to when it comes to trauma. Yeah. And I don't know. This is all like speaking from my personal, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a personal experience. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, I also feel like it's also scary to label something as traumatic to oneself because it's like a big label to put on yourself. It is. You know, and it's like then you're gonna. You're going to think about how are people going to see you now? If you label this as like, oh, I went through trauma. Now people are going to be like, wow, this person is like, is, is messed up. You get scared of being like pitied. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, are they going to treat me differently now? 
yeah that, that i've been through trauma or whatever yeah i think i also when i was like thinking about like whether or not this is trauma mm-hmm. i feel like that's not the most important thing yeah you know like yeah. Who cares whether yeah. it's trauma or not? I understand that it's maybe it's probably helpful when trying to like treat it mm-hmm. and get over your trauma or like at least process it. But at the end of the day, like I, I read, I wrote this down. Mm-hmm. This website, helpguide.org said, it's not the objective circumstances that determine whether an event is traumatic, but your subjective emotional experience of the event. Yeah. So it's all about the emotions. Yeah, I feel like it's more about, like, the after effects of that event. It you is. Know? It's basically, like, because, like, I feel like a lot of, like, tr- trauma has similar after effects for different yeah. situations, right? Mm-hmm. The situations could be unique to the individual, but the effects of that are pretty similar when you look at it, like, universally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. And honestly, like, that's all that really matters. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you label it trauma, some people might get scared and, yeah. you know, it's... Maybe for some people it's beneficial to just not call it that. Sure. I don't know. But does that also... That might, like, downplay the seriousness of it. Yeah, I think there's, like... I don't know. I'm just it's it's, it's it like now. a double-ended, like... like double, double-edged sword. Double-edged sword. Because it's, like... If you call it trauma and, like... You might even think that you're bringing more power to that word. Or be, like... I'm, like... Like, I'm... I'm you might feel like you're, like, messed up. As, yeah, it's like... Yeah, that like, kind of you're... Thing putting that as, like, yeah. a part of your personality when it shouldn't yeah. be. Yeah, so it's, like, you have to be aware of how much that is part of you and how much that is something that happened to you. Yeah, you know? I mean, just like a lot of other things, it might be helpful for some people, yeah. and it might not be helpful for others. Yeah. For me, personally, I think it was kind of, like, I felt like I was, like, exaggerating. Mm. When, in reality, I, I tell my therapist everything that happened to me, yeah. and... She's like, okay, so that's, like, traumatic to you, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I have such a hard time being yeah, like, like, yeah, uh, it is. <laughs> yeah. I have a really hard time with that because yeah. I think it is, it's scary to mm-hmm. put that word to it. Because, like we said, all it's always attached to some crazy event. Yeah. But, yeah, I think part of dealing with trauma, like, no matter what kind it is, mm-hmm. is accepting that it is affecting you now mm-hmm. and that it might be, like, changing or it might have affected the way you the way you developed yeah obviously depends on the situation for me i think just realizing that Mm. it validates your experience so much more yeah like it it can allow you to like feel seen right yeah it allows me to be like wait this is actually not right Mm. and i've spent so much time sitting there being like it was me who messed up Mm. when in reality like it was my assaulter you know? Yeah. yeah. I think the other thing about trauma is also just, like, there might be a stigma attached to it being, like, people who have been through trauma are weak. Yeah. Know? It's like, oh, I wasn't traumatized, so I'm stronger than you. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. like, you're more, more like, vulnerable and, like, yeah. you can't, you can't handle as much. Yeah, exactly. You're, like, like, you're not able to take as much stress if you're easily traumatized. Yeah. Which I think is, like, a big stigma. Yeah, that's, like, know. a little ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, like I'm, I'm, like, I'm just saying I've heard these things, right? Yeah. And it's important to, like, to talk those out. Because, like, even though you might not feel like it, it's a traumatic event to you, mm-hmm. it's just that, like, the way people are raised or, like, the environments they're in, like, different things can affect different people. I mean, everyone's so different. Like, yeah, I mean, literally, <laughs> that, that, that's the end of the line. Yeah, yeah. Like, everyone's so different. Mm-hmm. You, you're you going to have a different experience compared to other people. Mm-hmm. It's about, like, trying to validate other people's experiences. Whether you think that it's traumatic or not does not matter. Mm-hmm. You don't put a definition to that. Yeah. You don't define whether it's trauma or not. The other person does. Right. But I think it's the other person that's also responsible to, like, I don't know, kind of see mm-hmm. and acknowledge that it might be traumatic for them and it yeah. might have really affected them now yeah. because that's like to me the first step to healing towards these things i mean i have friends who've like been through like different types of trauma therapy like emdr mm. which is like super intense going into your traumatic memories and everything that goes along with it mm. and almost like putting yourself back in that situation yeah. which in like a from an outsider's perspective that might seem kind of counterproductive it's like bro why are you doing that yeah why are you putting yourself (laughs) back there but it desensitizes you because it's called emdr eye movement desensitization something (laughs) sure yeah whatever yeah but it's something like that 
But yeah, it kind of puts you back in the situation so you can face it. Mm. And it it helps. It's it's really intense for the first little bit. I I haven't had it, mm-hmm. but I don't remember what my point was when I started this conversation. I don't know. I think we started talking, we talking about, about like like how people view you and like how people like the stigma around being vulnerable and stuff. Yeah. But but then I started talking about. My, I had a point to this, but yeah, I don't okay. remember it well, anymore. Okay, I had a question. It's okay, like, okay. Once, like, once you figured out that, like, oh, I've been through trauma, yeah. like, how important was, like, having a good support system, and did you have that? Well, I did have that. Yeah. I just think that, like, it was difficult for me to kind of openly talk about it with mm-hmm. my support system. Yeah. Because there was so much of me that was, like, ashamed of things that Mm -hmm. happened, even though it wasn't my fault. Mm -hmm. But to me, in my head, it's like, if I tell these people all of this Mm -hmm. and everything that happened, all the details, what are are they going to change their their perspective of me? Right, yeah. And that is, like, it's so scary because I felt, like, so disgusting for so long. Mm. And I still do sometimes. Like, I just feel gross thinking about Mm -hmm. all the situations where I was just inappropriately touched. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't... I thought that, even though deep down, like, I know. I know that my support system, the friends that I have, they're, like, good people. They're not going to look at me as if it's my fault. But there's something that's just so terrifying about telling these people all of this and just having this view that they're going to look at you differently. Yeah. It was really important to have that support system, though, because I could still, even even just saying a little, yeah. even just saying a bit, mm-hmm. you know, it, it would be enough for me, mm-hmm. you know? And I remember telling people some of these situations before, and they would be like, that's kind of messed up. And then I'd be like, nah. It is what it is. Yeah, and yeah. it was like at a point where I didn't really see it as trauma, right? Right. But it was still helpful to me Because it, them being like, wait, that's kind of messed up was almost like, like a starter to me actually realizing that that is super messed up and not okay. Yeah. It's like different from what you're telling yourself, right? Yeah. So that, that support system helped me see like another perspective, right? Mm -hmm. And especially with my therapist, um, I kind of had like a very therapist moment the other night, the other night, the other day. (laughs) <laughs> night therapy I, that'd, be I was, cool. that'd be awesome <laughs> but yeah i had yeah. a lying down on the couch moment mm-hmm. with just looking up closing my eyes mm-hmm. and going through my experiences wow. and just my therapist telling me like this is a safe space you're comfortable there's no shame here yeah is it, it was so helpful to me because i i was able to relax and she kind of gave me like a meditation type of like a guided meditation almost before we started talking and it was just really nice to have that because she said like just start speaking like it doesn't have to make any sense whatsoever but you can go through your experience talk about it and she would ask about the little details of it Mm -hmm. and I hadn't really talked about that in a long time but I was able to kind of recall so many things that I had repressed before Mm -hmm. And repression was something that we were going to talk about. Yeah. Because it's a type of coping. Mm. Yeah, but <laughs> we'll get to that. But yeah, I think that support system is so important. Okay. I That's think good. without it, you're going to be stuck in your own head. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're not going to have that the, the perspective again. Yeah, and that, I, that's been so helpful to me. Yeah, uh, and I'm glad that you were able to, like, push against, like, the initial fear of, like, talking to your support system. Because I think that's, that's yeah. really hard to, like, like, your first circle of friends is, like, like you value them so much because mm-hmm. it's always like like how are they going to take this right yeah i think like being able to like overcome that fear is like super important yeah right Otherwise, even if yeah. even if it's just saying like hey like i went through something dramatic yeah you know like even if that helps you like that that's enough and when you're ready yeah to actually talk about it and then it's okay because then it's at least like it's out there. It's like it's like a real thing. It's a real right? thing and it's not just it's not just you looking at it trying to debate whether it mm-hmm. was like traumatic or not. Mm-hmm. It's valid no matter what. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So I wanted to talk Wait, Krista, how much time is on the Oh, uh, we have 9 minutes. Coping and like like repression and suppression is going to be kind of long. Be kinda long eh? Yeah. I mean We we can just 
we'll take a break. <laughs> yeah, we're going to take a break, guys. We're going to take a break, yeah. and we'll talk about coping when we are back. Yes. Coping. <laughs> coping. Hey, why, why, are you laughing? Around? why are you Sorry. laughing about coping? No, because, I don't know, because we were just talking about, like, silly sound effects. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> we were, it is we a switch up. Okay. No, because I think coping no, is No, they hilarious. don't know. They won't know. They won't know that we... That we... Well, we just told them. Okay, well, let's we'll go. cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This recording will be traumatic. <laughs> yeah, literally. Okay. Hey. Are you done with your eyes? <laughs> One second. <laughs> Can this be part of the break? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Okay. <laughs> Instead yeah. of the cool graphics. Yeah. Okay. Coping. Hmm. Someone coping with trauma. Yeah. So, there's two things. Repression and suppression. Obviously, there's way more coping mechanisms. Like, it could be crazy. But yeah. I really want to emphasize repression and suppression. Hmm. Because recently, I started reading this book called The Myth of Normal. Banger book. Banger. If anyone wants to read it. You should read it. I don't remember. Some doctor guy. Wow. I'll look it up. Wow. So people will know. Thank you, Christopher. Yeah, I bet also if you just search it up, it's a really popular book. Probably. The Myth of Normal, you'll see it. Mm-hmm. It has a really cool, colorful cover. Anyways. Uh, by Daniel Mate. Yeah, but it's also with another guy. And Gabor. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gabor is the the main guy, I think. And Gabor Mate. Are they brothers? No. One is it's a father and a son, actually. Oh wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Continue. Yeah, so this guy's like super educated. Mm-hmm. You can tell. There's like so much research and mm-hmm. I just want to talk about that book for a second mm-hmm. before we get into repression and suppression. Um and it's kind of talking about how we live in a society with just a bunch of like like misinterpretations mm. of trauma and a culture that is just not understanding traumatic events and mm. what can be considered traumatic, you know? Mm. So it's a really interesting book. There's just like so much in in it. <laughs> like I could not completely explain it to you. Sure. But what I wanted to touch on was like the way that he compared repression and suppression. Mm. Repression is an unconscious thing. When something traumatic happens to you, your brain is like, this is too much for me to handle and process, so I'm going to just brush it away (laughs) in the back of my mind. I was literally going to start singing that, but then I was like, not the time. (laughs) Not the time. Sorry. (laughs) Rewind. Yeah, so repression. (laughs) Repression, unconscious. Mm. And it's like a protection method, which I think is kind of crazy. Like, you don't even know that that's happening. Yeah. And yeah. often those memories will, like, resurface. Mm. And that's why, like, I realized my trauma after, like, a while. Yeah. Like, it took me years to be like, wait, wait a second. Something Hold about up. this isn't right. Let's rewind that. Next. <laughs> yeah. And I felt kind of silly because I was like, this, this whole thing ended so long ago. Mm. And now I'm sitting here recalling everything and i'm seeing it in a completely different light yeah and i think what happened was it's like something triggered me Mm -hmm. and then that it was like a response almost where those memories came flooding back Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then i was like wait i completely forgot that all this happened right but in reality it was just my unconscious mind it was in my unconscious mind you know and i think i saw like a picture of my assaulter or whatever Mm -hmm. and i was like and I just got so mad all of a sudden. Wow. And then I'm thinking about all these memories. Like, even a picture could just bring back so much. But also, I think just with age, like, especially if something happens to you at a young age. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. Right? Like, your mind is not developed enough to even begin to comprehend that. Yeah. Or not even, understand, like, what's, what's happening. Or even, right? like, if it's wrong. Yeah. Right? But, yeah, it just comes back so, like randomly too sometimes mm-hmm. there could not be a trigger or there could yeah and also like just to be clear like repression is only like like not everyone goes through that maybe like, yeah i feel like i don't think everyone does yeah i think I, it's just a I one know. of the coping mechanisms right yeah yeah but suppression 
compared to repression is mm-hmm. just consciously concealing your feelings and memories right. because it's too much to process. Mm. And the author gave a really good example, if you're like, <laughs> to compare this to. Mm-hmm. And he was comparing it to like coming across a rabid dog. <laughs> mm. And this is a quote. If I know I'm afraid but choose to conceal that from a rabbit dog who can smell fear, I'm suppressing my feelings. Mm-hmm. So you're like, con- you get right, it. Yeah. <laughs> you get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as opposed to repressing, as in compulsively pretending to agree with opinions one, fi- one finds repellent and not realizing it until later. Mm-hmm. So two different things there. Yeah. And I, th- I just thought that comparison makes it easier to understand. Yeah. Potentially. But... For me, I think I experienced both of these things. Mm. Years after, like, just sexual trauma, Mm. I was used to the same thing happening again and again to the point where when it was over, Mm. my mind just repressed the memories because it was just like, well, that's done. Mm. It's over, right? I mean, that's the way I see it. Like it's in the past or something like that. Yeah, like, that's kind of how I was trying to, like, just be like, whatever. (laughs) I didn't really think anything of of it until, Mm. like them coming back like the memories coming back alongside the realization that it was messed up yeah so even after that too i was kind of stuck in a uh a loop of like like those memories weren't repressed anymore Mm -hmm. but i wanted to suppress them because i didn't want to make them as serious as they were okay right and that's something that a lot of people i know have struggled with when they face trauma because it's like like we said, like it makes it so much more real. Yeah. And you just want to forget about it because especially when it comes to like sexual trauma mm-hmm. or anything of the sort, you're often thinking about how the other person probably doesn't think about that on the daily the way you do. Yeah. Because they're not affected by it the same way. Right. Right? And it makes you it makes it so hard to like validate your experience then. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's part of the process in just kind of for, for me, at least. Like, yeah. suppressing, it was so hard because it's so hard to actually, like, deeply think about what happened. I mean, like, also just in general, like, we don't like negative feelings, right? Yeah. Like, We've talked about not, this before, yeah. I think. But, like, negative feelings, uh-uh. <laughs> it's like, it's so uncomfortable. Yeah. And the fact that, like, like something of that intensity happened to, to ourselves is, like... You just don't want to, like... It's too much, right? Yeah, yeah. it's too much. And yeah. then you also think about how it affects you now. Yeah. Because I remember when I was talking to my therapist about this, I was just saying, like, so much of, like, I feel like this affected so much of who Mm -hmm. I am right now. Mm -hmm. Because those things that happened for years were in, like, vital years of my development. Like, literally Mm -hmm. puberty years. Yeah. Right? And it was, like, one after the other. Like, so many different times. Every single day. Right? So, when that's, like, deeply rooted into me and, like... There's so many, like, unconscious things right. and behaviors now. Yeah. And so many things that I, like, think about now that I I just can't help but wonder if those things never happened to me, then who would I be now, you mm. know? And I it's, guess it's shaped how you've, like... Yeah, and that, developed. like, that's a huge part of me just wanting to forget about it. And yeah. because I, I don't want to think that... I, I don't want that to be determined by my abuser, you know? Right, yeah. That kind of stuff should be, I, I should have discovered those things on my own. I should have, you know, mm-hmm. that's the way things should be, but yeah. they're not. Yeah. And talking about it just makes it kind of worse, but mm. I know it's supposed to help, but <laughs> talking it's about not it, easy. the reality is that when you talk about it, you're kind of just, for me, it was realizing how much of this has impacted the way I act now. Mm. And it makes me just so angry and upset and i just want to push that away i want to make it a less big deal you know yeah i think it's very influential right yeah because it makes me angry because i can't like i can't help but wonder like who would i be if it wasn't for those things yeah i think like we also often don't realize how much is affected until like you you you, you, you you're on this journey right yeah i mean the thing is too i feel like now that i've seen how much it's affected me Mm -hmm. once you do that you can get onto the path of getting away from that like i can see that my self-esteem gets low sometimes i can see that my entire perception of anything sexual is warped now yeah i've come to that realization and before i didn't really 
I almost blamed myself for those mm. things. Mm. But now that I've come to the realization that it's not my fault yeah. that I have a warped sense of these things, yeah. I can I can kind of put it in my like I can give myself power yeah. to change that. Right. Because if I hadn't come to the realization, then I would just be there ignoring these things and kind of blaming myself for all these things that are happening. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. And even like having that awareness that it wasn't on you. It sort of, yeah, again, it gives you the, like, you're able to control the story, right? Yeah. Control your story. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it just seems so, like, out of your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any questions right now? I was no, going to move on I mean, to, like, supporting. Yeah, I, this is, like, a whole, I think it might be a different conversation. But I was just wondering, like, like, especially, like, abusers in a very young age. Mm-hmm. And, like, from that perspective, like do you know what you are doing and how has that like i think it'd be interesting to find out like how that has influenced like how they like view like the abuser yeah yeah i mean like i don't don't want to give like power to them or anything but i think it's just like good perspective to like figure out like whether they knew what they were doing yeah i mean that's the thing too and that's what makes it hard that made it hard for me to validate my experience right because you know my abuser was young too Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. And I knew that this person didn't know things the same mm. way I didn't know things. Right. And was going through puberty the same way I was going through puberty. Mm. I mean, it doesn't give them an excuse or anything. It, it doesn't, doesn't. It doesn't make your experience any less valid. Yeah. Right. But I think that's like what was especially hard about coming to terms with it. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, well, you know, he was he was young too. He didn't know mm. things, you sure. know? Sure. Right? Um, that's why it's really hard to kind of accept that, like, it's still not okay because yeah. you don't see every person going through puberty do that type exactly, of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But yeah, I I I wonder that too sometimes. Yeah. But then I also just really don't care because I hate my that's, user. <laughs> that's, no, that's totally yeah. Fair. I think it's just like, it, it it is it is an important perspective, but also it shouldn't like take away from anything that like victims have. Been yeah. Through, right? At the end of the day, it's about the victim. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Whether they're young or not, like. It's, so many situations are different, yeah. and it's really hard to fully understand why people did the way they did the things that they did. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they're just, like, bad people. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. And yeah. I have so much trouble just, like, realizing that, that yeah. people are just bad people. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, um, we're kind of going towards the end mm-hmm. of... This whole this whole trauma thing, and I think we should end it on how to support someone who yeah. it who you know has been traumatized, because sometimes it feels like you you you're like scared of saying the wrong thing, mm. and you're scared that you might set this person off or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I know you supported people mm-hmm. before well, with. <laughs> I know not, you support like, people sometimes every yeah. every now and then. <laughs> It's not like I'm like a professional supporter. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. I know, but like <laughs> I, I feel like you, you, have, you got something to say. I'm a trauma this. supporter, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you, how do you support me? Like, <laughs> I think the important thing is just to give space to, to let people tell their own story. You know, mm-hmm. like I think the big part about trauma is that so much of their like experience has been taken away from them, and it's become like something else that they don't want to be a part of that. Like, whenever they're sharing something, it's, like, you're letting them give the space to take power for, like, what they've been through. Yeah. You know? And like, they're telling the story. Yeah, they're telling the story. And I think it's important to, like, not not be too critical or, like, aggressive of, like, oh, what happened here? Or, like, like how did you come to this position? And, like, mm-hmm. why didn't you say this instead of that? Right? Mm-hmm. I think, I, I mean, I, maybe that's obvious, but, like, I think it's just important to, like, be open and just... Like, well, some people just want to know all the details. I know, I know. And it's very, it's, it's very curious. Like, yeah. like, especially as someone who you like, if you really, really care about them, you're mm-hmm. like, I want to know everything. And I want to know like, like what happened. And I want to know this person's address. Cause I can just, you know, like <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. But it's like, it's got to be in their own pace. Yeah. The thing, right. Yeah. So I think that's very important. I completely all. agree. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I've had like. I've been forced to, like, tell my trauma before. Mm-hmm. And it's the worst thing yeah. ever. Yeah. 
especially from who was like forcing it out of me, I knew it was out of like care for me yeah. because they felt like they they needed to know, mm-hmm. right? But it's you can't force someone to talk about their trauma if they haven't processed it yeah. because at that point I was still like kind of in the process of accepting that it's even trauma mm-hmm. and that it's like I hadn't even talked about it with my therapist in depth yet. Yeah. But like some people aren't ready, you know? Yeah. And the minute I was talking about my trauma, like I I felt like it was out of my hands because mm-hmm. they were just like, you have to tell me. Like, this right. is important. Yeah. This is something that affects you day to day. You have to tell me. Yeah. And that's like just so unfair to me because I haven't even, I'm still struggling mm-hmm. with kind of taking the blame off of myself. Yeah. And I was sitting there like, what is this person going to think of me when I tell them? Exactly. Are they going to think of me differently? And it was it was so scary. Because then, after that point, mm-hmm. it led me into like a downward spiral of just... I was fully triggered because I had to rethink and like remember all those things. Mm-hmm. And revisit them. When I was not ready to. It wasn't in your own terms. It wasn't in my own terms. I, I wanted to decide when I get to tell my story and what's happening but it was forced out of me in a way that like I felt like I really had to say something and thankfully I didn't go in like full details I didn't have to Mm -hmm. but it was so like it was scary it was definitely scary and it just made the next couple of days like you saw too I was like I was done and then for the next couple of days I was thinking I was just thinking about it all the time and it was it was really bad. That that's the one thing I'll say. Like like you're saying with the mm. the pacing. Yeah. It is up to the victim. Yeah. You can't make someone say any of these things and like I don't know the details of like one of my like maybe like some of my closest friends, some of them have trauma. Sure. I don't know the deep details of that. Yeah. But I'm not Okay. Like, I, yeah, like, it's not up to me to decide whether I know that or not. That's true. And also, I think it's important to, like, strike a balance, too, right? It's not like it's not like you, you don't want to say anything about it, and you just want to let them come to you. Like, mm-hmm. like that's part of it, but also you want to show them that you care and that you're yeah. interested in, in their story, mm-hmm. right? So you got to have that balance. And I think, like, it's taken me a while to, like, figure that out. Because, like, initially, like, when I, like, hear people who have trauma, like, my first response is to, like, just ask them everything, you know? Mm-hmm. And to be like what's going on because I don't want to see my friend like feel this way again yeah and, and you want to like talk yeah and like like even being next to them feeling so sad every single day it's mm-hmm. like what why aren't you telling me this like why are you just going through this alone yeah right but it's like then you realize that it's not it's not my place right yeah it's it's their experience yeah. and what they went through and it's just not okay to ask all the details about it because if one thing is like if they're not telling you the explicit details Mm -hmm. they probably don't want to (laughs) exactly and it's simple as that yeah or else they would Mm -hmm. if they were ready they probably would if they're comfortable and feel safe enough they probably would the same way i went into so many details with my therapist Mm -hmm. when before i told people about these experiences but very vaguely yeah right and you know as there's so many different reasons why Mm -hmm. like judging and getting scared of that type of thing but it's it's whenever they're ready yeah and the important thing is to like give them like to be a space for them when when they are ready yeah and let's like like, show yeah Yeah. show that that space is safe for them yeah it's like it's here and it's always gonna be here like like the the least the the most you can do if they're not gonna talk to you is just like let them know that you're here yeah and like like communicating that is so important like not just like mm-hmm. just standing there but like, okay well i'm here whenever you're ready but it's also just like like you text them or like you even just try sure. to hang out sure. with them yeah. you know or just try to like try to be around them yeah. and not like like pester or like you know poke yeah around. not like yeah not yeah. like get into the nitty-gritty details so i think that that was that was actually like a hard thing to like learn as a supporter because it's like it's like you, you want to do your best to help. And it's yeah, because like it's think a lot of love helpless. and you think right. like like talking about it will help yeah. them. But sometimes it, it's it's yeah. it's not good. It's not, it's not fun. Yeah. Right? So I think yeah, like that no, was a good lesson to learn. Yeah. yeah. I think also just as a person yeah. who's been like traumatized, mm-hmm. um, 
sometimes I've been at a point where like I almost hope that one of my supporters or like my social circle will ask me about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like the point that you're making about like um, make sure that they know that it's a safe space. Like yes. that's so important because otherwise I, I was just sitting there almost like hoping that someone would ask yeah. <laughs> and just be like, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talk to me. I'm exactly. here for you. Right? Because even that just makes me feel less alone. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise I was like isolated. Yeah, completely. especially even like after the pandemic, especially it's just so easy to be isolated. Yeah. You know? And yeah. that's a whole, that's a whole nother like level of isolation that you have to overcome. Like, mm-hmm. regardless of, like, even if you're taking, a, a, like, like a year off from university or anything, yeah, that's also another level of isolation because you're not meeting your friends. Yeah. Right? So there's, like, so many different situations where, like, it's so important to just text the people you like and yeah. people you love. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I think that's very important. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just have one last thing to say for, like, supporters, though. Yeah, true. So if they do come to you talking about their experiences, mm-hmm. just, this is obvious, but validate them. Yeah. <laughs> make their experiences legit like yeah. if they're really upset about it you be upset about it too yeah <laughs> i mean yeah. i would sure hope so if a yeah. loved one came exactly. to you talking about exactly. it exactly i think yeah just to add on to that just like you need to give that story also like a space to live like outside of them because mm-hmm. the reason they're coming to you is to like it's almost like a thing about making it real right mm-hmm. and it's like making it so that it's not just in their head yeah. So, and try, try to make sure that you don't say that it's just in your head, you know? Yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah. a crazy line to yeah. say. That it's just in your head. Yeah. Oh my God. So, I think like, that's really important. I think just telling them, not telling them what they should have done yeah. or like things like that. Like you are not in that situation. Yeah. You as a supporter don't have the right to get into any of that. Mm-hmm. And I've been told like, why didn't you do this or this? Mm-hmm. And it's like, girl, right. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I was young. Yeah. I was scared. I just froze up. That's also, like, coping in itself. Yeah. So, it's like, you're not put in that situation. You don't have the right to talk about what you should have done mm-hmm. if you're not experiencing that. But, yeah, like, one one person's trauma is different than what another person could find traumatic. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So, I did want to say that to kind of end off on the whole... Yeah. Like, we're all here to support each other and just, like, yeah. just listen to each other and validate each other. So, yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was important to talk about trauma so we can kind of... I mean, I wanted to talk about my story a little bit yeah. because I think it's it's helpful to other people to understand. Mm-hmm. And also just... I'm I'm in the process, too, of actually processing this. Like, yeah. I'm not fully healed or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I think everyone's just in a journey. Like, it's always a constant journey. It's not like... You yeah. never reach the destination, I think. Yeah. yeah. No. That... Yeah. That's an interesting topic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I hope you guys, I don't know, enjoy isn't the right word, but kind of gain some insight. Yeah, informed. And if you're dealing with trauma, I am so sorry. And I hope you take care of yourself. Yeah. And, and reach out to your people who love you. Yeah. Because we love you. We love you. Yeah. Um, we will see you in two weeks. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram at Diving Deep With Us. Um, like comment and subscribe that's a cool new button yeah, yeah. how long are you gonna keep saying that it's new yeah just find out what happens after you press it yeah yeah um anything else i don't know we, we got a gmail <laughs> diamond deep with us, gmail.com no ever emails us yeah, yeah if you're like yeah if, if, if you, you know, feel old school you know? if you really want to email you could <laughs> yeah it's diving deep with us at gmail.com yeah. Yeah, we'll see you in two weeks we'll see you in two weeks bye edit that out by someone i mean me (laughs) or me we don't have an editor (laughs) we are the editors